Another anime season, another roster of mid isekais, but was the appraisal isekai mid? Mm, it was interesting, right? It's a unique in the sense that the character does have the appraisal skill, which is not unique, but the unique thing is he is able to scout talent around him, make them strong, and the house rise to power. Usually Isekai, the main character themselves is strong, and then everyone around them is just like NPCs or a harem member. So I guess this one is kind of unique. I enjoyed it, right? Maybe you guys did too. We're gonna continue with the reactions. Let's begin today's episode. The qualities that we, you know, fucking scout people. I think they need one more quality called yapping. And if this kid, you know, scouted me, if he appraised me on the yapping quality, bro, I'm an S grade yapper, bro. Jujutsu Kaisen, special grade yapper. This shit would be fucking SSS Frank for yapping, bro. Notice how this show, like, I know that this kid's only three, but like, seventh Shota. Right? Will they pimp out this kid too? Probably not. It's just like, there's two animes right now that centers around little boys. But one show is heavily leaning into the, you know, the Shotokan fandom. And this one is like, nah. This kid's just cute. He's got a big ass face. To okay. We are a Luvent family, right? This is, uh, Sung Jin Woo's voice actor. Bro even caught the sword with his foot. So slick. Alright. Not only is he... Can he fight? He's also smart. Even the maids are thirsting over Ritz, bro. Yo, the maids gonna fucking pounce on Ritz, bro? Are we gonna make some little Ritz babies? What's going on here, maids? Come on now. Their lesson? What do they do? And then the empire happened, yes. Ansel just like dominated. That's the actual king. This fucking teaching session is just for us, bro. It's fucking NPC exposition time. Uh oh Why? Dire situation. This is the kid that we saw in the opening that seems to be the same age. Well, he's not the same age. He's eight years old. But okay, so the current emperor is very young. And I'm sure there's like two factions that's trying to, trying to puppeteer and trying to manipulate him to get the power, right? Yes, the people behind the scenes, the true puppet masters. So the other houses around, they're basically revolting against the emperor. Your dad's gonna die, bro. Okay, so the kid right over here that I mentioned, it's not the emperor's current emperor's sovereign. It's, this is a separate kid. That you can see the, 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 I don't know what the shading here, right? This is the MILF witch that we haven't met yet. So these are the other characters that we're going to scout pretty soon. This one looks like a fucking MILF. I think this is the girl where I stopped in the opening. I was like, oh my god, who are you? So we have the witch MILF, and then we have this other, you know, mommy girl too. Okay. <laughs> Oh, shit. Yo, we need someone else in charge. Here we go, succession more time. Hmm. We need to stop that. How? Fuck them, overpower them, and then we get the fucking, you know, the, the, the position. No. Do we have to back one specific side? What side would we take? I take the younger. I, I don't care about fucking family birthrights. The younger son is the more competent. Put him in charge. Meritocracy. Fuck the right. Fuck the right. No. The most capable should lead. Why? Okay, within each province, then there's there's even more subsections known as districts. Okay. Lamberg, that's where we are in, is in the Kanare district of the Mishim province. Okay, okay. Neither. Neither. Oh? 
This is dumb mentality, bro. This is dumb mentality. Whenever there's a saying, right? A pinch is a chance. Whenever you have a, you get dealt a shitty hand, whenever something bad happens in your life, what do you do? You don't fucking sulk. You can grieve over it, but then you try to do a reversal. Think about how you can make that bad situation into a good one. Ritz is too competent, bro. He's too reliable. All right, I hope we get to scout the MILFs pretty soon. We, we need some mommy girls around. I feel a sneeze coming. I feel a sneeze coming. I'm good, I'm good. MILF witch time! Get that wizard MILF girl with the hat, yes! That's pretty much Paul from Mushoku Tensei. He's only good for swordsmanship. Mommy Roxy. The fuck? Is that an infinity gauntlet? <laughs> okay, we have no talent for magic. <laughs> Even the dad's like, shit. I'm sorry, kid. You're just not cut out for that. You listen, you listen, you're good at like scouting other people's talents, but like you're in it, you know, your innate talent for magic, like, oh, okay, let's put that down. Let's get you back on the fucking, you know, the scouting roster. I want the mage for completely different reasons, though. It's bougie here. Dang. We only have a thousand people in Lambert? Gee. Look at their clothing. What the fuck? There's just like a fucking dragon pet up right around. Okay. Alright, time to stalk people and appraise them now. Who's good? Who's good here, huh? Just a bunch of shitters all around. These. Bald. So there's a number aspect, and then there's an aptitude aspect. There's a number that quantifies, and then there's like an archer B. That's the aptitude, right? So a number and a letter. Their actual talent seems to be the result of mul multiplying the two. Okay, okay, my bad. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. The actual... Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Numerical values and aptitude ranks, and if you multiply, you get the actual thing. Even if you have high stats numbers, right? If without the right aptitude, it doesn't mean much. It's just pretty much wasted, you know, potential. Is it... Can we find people with high skill stats and then find the right aptitude for them? Because it sounds like there's a lot of wasted potential here, and we're just trying to find the perfect person who has the stats and the right aptitude. I wonder if we can find someone with just the stats and then find their aptitude for them by training them. I don't know how that would work. Milf. Milf. No. Homeless people. Sad. Is it is is our wizard here? Our sorceress? Our MILF? Where's she at? Ritz is telling it like it is, bro. It may be that prosperity itself breeds wealth inequality. Late stage capitalism, right? It happens like that, that. It happens that like everywhere, bro. You go to any fucking city that's like the high quality of life, high cost of living. People, there's a lot of rich motherfuckers, but there's also a shitload of homeless people, right? I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Vancouver is pretty much pretty much known for like. Having like mountains and beaches and it's beautiful, but it's so fucking expensive. If you go downtown and if you look at luxury stores, so this is what happens. 
you look at like Louis Vuitton stores, Gucci stores, it looks all nice. You have tourists and rich people shopping. Right outside the fucking, you know, the stores, there's homeless people just sleeping outside. It's a fucking crazy thing. And you get so desensitized to it. You just, it's just natural to see homeless people. It's just, you just expect to see that shit when you go downtown, man. It sucks. It, it, that's what happens when you have like unmoderated, like late stage capitalism. Oh, no. That's the thing, right? How do you save individual people like that? You can never save everybody, right? We got to save Ritz, but that's a special case, right? You can't save everyone in the world. That's like the unfortunate reality. So what can you do? Well, you can try to be a good person, but beyond that, this kid could try to reshape the kingdom the province so that you know wealth inequality like this doesn't happen right that's a kind of a way to actually enact systematic change not yet that's what tourists think right you go to a rich place you go to a really high cost of living place high quality of life it looks beautiful yeah in the tourist location step outside the tourist location what are the locals actually living like bro it fucking sucks this is the true reality of the city. And then when you say shit like this, it's like, oh, why not try to have a city where nobody, you know, is everybody's equal and stuff like that. Then you'll have the people that's been just like fed so much propaganda that were like, no, these are lazy motherfuckers. Get a fucking job. Skill issue. Just get a house. Oh, yeah. As if people will just hire these people. They're already so fucked in the system, they cannot get out of the system. And the, f the really shitty thing about this American dream mentality of this rooted in individualism, it's really romantic, right? You think that, oh, through pure meritocracy, meritocracy by just pulling up your bootstraps, I too can live my dreams. But the American dream is a false fucking delusion that is sold to people so that people become selfish. So that if some people make it, then they have this mentality that, oh, I did it. Why can't you fucking do it, you pussy? Right? I work so fucking hard to get where I'm at right now. You guys are lazy. You're homeless. You have no fucking job. You have no prospects. Fuck you. You deserve this. The working class is fucking battling against each other. While the top class that rules over the system just sees these monkeys throwing shit at each other when we should be shitting, throwing shit up above. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes when you see other people that's doing worse than you, just do a little reality check and realize that maybe instead of shitting on them, recognize the situation, recognize how, you know, recognize the privileges you have. And maybe this is the wrong people that we should be engaging with. Just maybe... We're all just getting puppeteered by like the top elite class that's basically doing divide and conquer to spread, you know, spread mass propaganda. It, it just sucks when I see people that's still rooted in this kind of mentality of like, I got mine. Why can't you get yours? It's a crab bucket mentality. Crab bucket mentality basically means, no, that's a different thing. Crab bucket mentality is when you have a bucket of crabs and when, when crab tries to leave the bucket, the other crabs will prevent that crab from leaving because it's like, if I have to suffer, then everyone else has to suffer. Okay, maybe the MILF is here somewhere? Who knows? I see the person. Not that Giat over here. This person, there's someone listening. Blue hair, is she it? Who is she? No, she doesn't literally look like... Did she have the same hair color? I can't tell. Just because he's missing his tooth there, and just because in Spice and Wolf, the scammer was also missing a tooth, I feel like this is a scam, and tourists are getting baited here by this dragon egg guy. These aren't fucking dragon eggs. What is this? No, 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 no. <laughs> That would be cool to have a dragon pet, but mm, like I don't want to shit on people that don't have money to fix their, you know, their dental, you know, process, right? Like if they're missing a tooth because the shit happened bad, it's like it kind of sucks to make fun of them. But stereotypically, you know, shady motherfuckers always kind of look like this. No, 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 Ritz, stop him! Okay, wavy. Okay, Ritz pointing a knife and threatening him is a little bit too much for scamming. I don't know. This is like, you went to like a hundred years. Like, maybe we should have got to ten. You just skipped the fucking stuff. True. True. Straight up, this is the current YouTube drama right now between me and Fraud Lad, bro. 
facts and logic, facts and logic, multiple examples, facts and logic, facts and logic, facts and logic. Liar! Okay, maybe you don't have to kill though. That's kind of insane. Ritz is uh, too loyal. Holy fuck. No, that was good. It's just, you know, less on the killing. Okay. We gotta study harder so Ritz doesn't kill someone. Oh, it's that girl again! It's that girl again! It's that... Stolen, stolen, stolen. It's that same girl again that was listening to her conversation. Bump, gone. Bump, gone. Ritz! Ritz is gonna kill that person now. Ours is really, really naive. Because... Hold the fuck up. Who was he before? How did he get Isekai here? Hold the fuck up. I'm not remembering episode one. Who was this guy before? Because I could believe a complete newborn kid doing this shit. Do we know how he got isekai All I remember in episode one is... We saw the father's death and then we went back in time. Was he just a simple merchant? I don't remember what he was before getting isekai Maybe this is spoilers? Holy shit, I'm forgetting details. Anyways, my point is, this kid is getting scammed so fucking easily. I thought he'd be a little bit more smarter about this. <laughs> that turn, the MILF, maybe? Mage! It's gotta give her a hat, and I think it fits. Oh, what the fuck? Wait, wait, what the way? What the fuck? Also, this is not really a MILF anymore if he's calling her a little brat. Yeah, she doesn't really look like a MILF. I swear to God, in the opening, she looked more like a MILF. I, I got baited. <laughs> Ooh, Ritz! You dead. You dead! Judah flip! Judah flip! Judah flip! <laughs> this ain't over as he fucking runs away. I'll get you back. Oh god. Oh god. Don't let me fucking find you and get the fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> Let's see this. Leadership, pretty good. Prowess, pretty good. Um, diplomacy, pretty good. But the aptitude, they're all D's. Where's the magic? There it is, Mage S! S rank acquired. That's what we need. One trick ponies that's good at one thing. Yeah, yeah. And she's got pretty good other stats too. Yeah, prowess and yeah. Charlotte Wraith, 11 years old, female. She is not a fucking milf. What in the fuck is going on? The anime opening made her so voluptuous. What the? F There's a time skip that eventually happens, I guess. But like, God the f what the fuck? We got baited. It's fine. You got we we got a specialty though. All right. <laughs> All right. That's nah, fine, Ritz. S rank. Hmm? <laughs> okay, she's a little sassy. What? What can't you stand, little kids? Because it's potential. It's, it's talent. You don't know yet. She does look like a slave though, huh? Because like her outfit is like literally Isekai slave uniform, right? And then around her neck too, that seems like to be where the collar should be. Free food, free rent, and you get allowance. Ah, uh, her thing is, I hate rich motherfuckers. They cause so much pain on me. Why should I trust you? And then we have to prove to them, no, we are not just any rich motherfucker. We are the rich motherfucker. And then she'll be like, oh, rich people aren't so bad after all. And then she'll eat something and go umlai and then we're good. We're not looking down. She is speaking some truth, man. We were born into wealth. The most important thing in life, the thing that really affects your trajectory in life and whatever material success or happiness, 
is your spawn point. Literally the spawn point into what family, into what part of the world you were born in. It, it's, it's so unfair, man. That's just life, bro, right? You can't do anything about it. We never asked for this shit. We all spawned at a certain point, right? You got spawn point at a really wealthy country with like a wealthy family. Great. Your, your life is already fucking set. You get spawn point. You don't, you're a fucking orphan. You got such a disadvantage for you to climb. Not everyone is born equal. That's the biggest lie. Even Anakoji fucking asked himself in the bus, right? Or is all life created equal? I don't think so. And that's not a bad thing. We just have to work around. No, he's never done that. Yeah. Yes. Oh no, 10 years? 20 years when you become a MILF? She's just too twisted, too extreme thinking for the rich people being only one type of people. Ritz is like, alright, you're talking some shit. Fair. All I care is about is the pouch. Give me my fucking pouch back and then we'll get out of here. <laughs> Give me that fucking purse, come on. The collar marks, dude. Local gang members? <laughs> what? 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 I mean, okay. I, she looks alright, right? Like, what do we, I mean, she's a little fool. So we're getting to see a little bit more of her other quirks, right? Her different personality, right? She's a little uh, humble, for sure, humble. Yes. Why not? Why not? Why can't she feel herself, man? She's aware. <laughs> for the other people suffering here. She feeds the kids on top of that man. Oh, she's actually such a good person. <laughs> What are we gonna do? We need to like offer them some kind of shelter. Give the money to him. Not trying. He is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it is funny, right? You're right, Ragon. The solution? Money. At the end of the day, we're all slaves to the currency, right? The money. We're all just talking about, oh, you rich motherfuckers, oh, you just want to look good, right? You don't know, you know nothing about us. Take my money. Oh shit, I guess you're not too bad after all. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's the thing about money, right? It's just like, money isn't evil. People that have money are not all evil. Everyone needs money, but it's just kind of funny how she's talking all that shit and you just give her the fucking purse the money. It's like, oh, it's just so simple. Just solve your problem with money. Bye-bye. So what should we do? We need to raise these kids out of poverty and then that she can feel fine to come with us. How do we do that? Mm, maybe we could open our orphanage, yeah? Maybe, yeah? Not, not, not any orphanage! Orphanage to scout highly talented people. It's like our little farm. That sounds fucked up. That sounds fucked up that I'm treating them like cattle. As an orphanage, just trying to get the most talented orphans so that we can raise them up to be our perfect weapon. <laughs> yeah, we're making a white room, dude. We're making a white room, dude. Very kind orphanage, okay? Life isn't just black and white, yes or no. There's nuances in the middle. And she's not wrong about that. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What's happening? These fucking lackeys again, bro. And that's the episode. Today's episode, I'm kind of interested in how like the different things that they're talking about the show is making me yap about different things in life more right it's nice when there's actually shows that has real world examples for example poverty right how really rich places right there you, you think in the outside it looks all great everyone's rich and everyone's happy but it's like no they're just showing me the good shit wait till you see what's actually going on right there's always you know 
a, a wealth gap that happens in cities like this. And even talking about like how the spawn point, you're born rich, right? You got all these privileges. What the fuck do you know about what we're going through? This show really does talk about tackle themes, right? That I never thought some kind of random isekai would, but it does feel like this show is like a... I mean, someone even mentioned that the show feels like civilization when we're talking in the beginning, right? A lot of world building, a lot of diplomacy, politics, the economic situations of, you know, the citizens, different kingdoms, stuff like that. So, so far, it's pretty interesting to me. And yes, we are going to get a time skip. So this girl will eventually grow up to my MILF. Maybe it's going to be like a 20-year time skip. But that's it from me. If you're still here, if you did enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. Until next time, take care.